Hello, students. Michael Sanchez, violin teacher here. We're going to be working on a couple things today. The C minor scale, which has got three flats. And then we're going to be doing a really fun piece called the Jeguetta by Bach. All right, so the two octave C minor scale is um, tricky in some ways in that there's easily missed notes. Make sure that you guys are um, really watching your uh, A flats, which come up quite often. And... Um, We'll go ahead and warm up with us. So use lots of bow and get to the tip. There's my major. So my minor is going to be different. And then the third note is flat. So it's going to be. Make sure you watch that. And then we also have E flats, which are going to come up. And then the A flat is low four on the A uh, D string. It's like that. All right, let's try it. Like that, so it's good warm up. Make sure that when you guys are in third position, you're just squeezing the one back so that you can hit that A flat. But make sure you don't dip the hand to reach that A flat. Keep the knuckles up. Okay, so we're gonna go into the Jiguetta now, and um, I think this is a really good piece to work on your spiccato, which is uh, not very easy for some people. So the, the key to get a good spiccato is making sure that your hand is extremely relaxed and that you guys are not forcing each bounce of the bow. Having a nice bow definitely helps this, but um, the biggest thing is just that you're not forcing the bounce. You're not picking at the string, like I, I call it in a lot of cases. You're letting the bow do the work. You're letting the bow sink into the strings, and you're just letting it bounce and controlling it with the index. So let's just go ahead and try um, some open D strings, trying to get a spiccato, and I want you guys to avoid this. I'll exaggerate it. Right there, that's picking, I call it picking at the string. My bow grip is really tight. Uh, my thumb is really jabbing into the bow. My pinky is stilted, I call it, at the button. Overall, I just have a really strong grip, not a flexible wrist. So all those things I just mentioned have to be relaxed and curved so that you're getting more of this. Make sure the fingers are curved and then just give the bow a little bit of a bump with the index to make it just kind of move uh, consistently. That's the key is that you want it to be consistent and you want it to get more of a hearty feel and not a pick that feel. This is a pick that feel. You want more? So while you would think it's more force and effort, it's actually less. But it's just a matter of putting your bow in the right position and letting the index uh, guide the way. Okay, so this piece is very good to work on the spiccato as everything, all, as far as all the 16th notes, I would suggest that you guys play at the frog and try to get that nice bounce that we were just trying to work on. I'm going to minimize my um, screen a little bit so that I can get everything in one screen. Just one moment here. There we go. Okay. So you see, you guys can see where I'm at in the bow. I'm trying to basically get to the point where my bow would balance on the violin. So if you guys want to try this a second, take your bow and just try to balance it on the instrument. Obviously, be in a place where you're not going to be afraid to drop it <laughs> or have somebody else there to help you. But as you can see right now, I don't have my hand on the bow. I'm letting it balance on the strings. That's the, that's the bounciest part of the bow. That's where we want to focus our, our efforts because that's going to be where we get the most action on with the bow with the strings. So right about here is where it balanced. It's like that. Okay, so I'm going to play through a little bit of it so you guys can kind of see the style and what we're going for. We definitely don't want this to be legato. We don't want to play it. 
You want? And then here, when we get when we get softer, uh, same concept. We're still letting the bow do the work, but we're not um, using as much pressure into the bow to make it louder. So what I want you guys to try is getting basically going between a soft spiccato and a loud spiccato, just with open D. So this is a loud spiccato, soft spiccato, loud. And if I wasn't using my index, that would have been impossible. Uh, that allows me to get that nice consistent uh, beat, heartbeat, without uh, picking at the string. So we wouldn't we wouldn't want it to sound like this. Like that. That's the difference. Okay, let me take it at line three where we're um, playing softer. Once we get to those eighth notes, it's definitely okay to play those a little bit more legato on the string. But yeah, anytime you see those sixteenth notes, I highly recommend trying to get that same sound that I was just doing as playing off the string is definitely ideal there. Great. So uh, yeah, let's maybe go back to the beginning a little bit and talk about some more stuff. So um, you know, intonation is obviously a big thing in this piece or any piece. Uh, make sure that you're getting your F naturals low enough and you're watching your um, F sharps in some places with accidentals. Um, in line two, we have that B flat. Make sure you guys are getting that in tune. And then, yeah, definitely vibrato the eighth notes. And uh, watch the rhythm in the uh, second line last measure. That should be. Just like that. So, yeah, uh, a, lot, a lot of things to work on here as far as uh, the spiccato and, and intonation. And also dynamics. So you definitely see some spots where it's louder than others and much softer. Let me go through it again. Uh, maybe just a little bit faster. Um, you guys can take it at your own speeds that you like. But um, we're trying to get that nice spiccato sound. So I'll go ahead and uh, play it so you guys can hear what it should sound like. Or you guys can try it, um, you guys can try it at home. All right, here we go. So I don't know if you guys noticed my decrescendo in the third to last line. That definitely is uh, something that takes a lot of index control. So starting at, you know, forte, um, pick up to the last, uh, to that particular spot there right here. We start really loud. And then we get louder or softer all the way down to piano. So see if you guys can do that. Um, I'll do it again so you guys can see. But basically what it takes is using more bow at the beginning using more pressure with my index finger, and then kind of using less and less and less as I get down basically to the end of that, uh, to where at the end, watch how much bow I'm using. I'm using very little bow at the end of that. So. So right here I'm 
using only about maybe an inch of bow at the end here. Whereas the beginning I was If you guys can still get a spiccato on that, that would be ideal. Instead of... Just like that. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, so the biggest things to work on are the three things, uh, working on your spiccato, working on your intonation, and then definitely making sure that you guys are applying appropriate dynamics throughout and uh, not uh, skipping over some of those as that definitely adds a lot to a piece when you're able to put those in. Watch your G naturals, watch your F naturals, but there definitely is a lot of uh, accidentals as well in here. So make sure to watch those. And then, yeah, definitely vibrato anytime you have a chance, um, definitely on the, um, on the longer notes. So, yeah, if I play maybe at, um, uh, let's see, the fifth line, just pay attention how I vibrato uh, some of the longer notes. Right there. Vibrato. 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 And to achieve that nice vibrato, I mean, you really can't be pressing hard on the fingerboard because your fingers are moving everywhere from one to four, one to four, all over the place. So if you have extra force into the fingerboard, it's going to cause you to not really be able to vibrate. So you want to make sure that, you know, when you're placing the fours, you're placing them lightly and not too hard into the string. So actually, that's a really good spot. There are two lines from the end. Um, I'll circle it to make sure you guys know where I'm at. It's so right here. There's uh, quite a few fourth fingers in here. I think it would be very easy for the hand to get too tense there for you guys not to get a good vibrato for the D because you're maybe putting too much pressure down into the fingerboard with the four. So not too much. Not too much. The nice vibrato at the end of that. Like that. Very good. Okay. So um, for those of you guys that have heard this piece, you know it does go maybe faster than this. <laughs> um, welcome to the world of playing Bach uh, Allegro. As you can see, it's um, 176 eighth note. So that is um, pretty fast. Um, so, but yeah, for those of you guys who have been playing a, a two to four year experience, I think what I just took it was fine. Um, I might even make some mistakes trying to go too fast, but let me just give you an idea of maybe up to speed. So that's kind of up to speed. But, yeah, you got to start somewhere and uh, use your metronomes to maybe work up speed a little bit if you can. Otherwise, focus on the techniques of um, articulation, dynamics, um, intonation. And uh, the biggest one, I would say, is spiccato off the string. So if you guys haven't really done much with that, I think this would be a great piece to work on it. All right, I'm going to hang out with some of the people that are here in the live class and answer any questions. And uh, for those of you guys that are watching um, from – <clears throat> the audio version of the class. I uh, highly encourage you guys to participate next week. We do these uh, two to four year experience classes on um, uh, Thursday nights at uh, 8.30. So hope you guys join us then.